And with the sun shining down, it literally is a very warm welcome to Mansfield Park in Hoyk for round two of the Kings of the Sevens. Last week, an on-form Watsonians were the first to take home 10 points in the tournament, but can they do it again today? Melrose are the current holders of the Hoyk silverware after beating Jed in the final last year, but it's been six years since Hoyk lifted their own trophy, so surely they'll want to give the home crowd something to celebrate today. Again, we see the pool format today with three teams contesting each one and the winner of each pool going straight through to the semi-finals. With a look at what happened in those pool games, here's Stuart Cameron. Pool A saw Edinburgh Aki, Selkirk and Peebles grouped together and it was the city side who progressed with two comfortable wins, but Peebles getting three points for the second week running following their 36-0 win over Selkirk. Pool B was the most attractive of the four with Kelso together with Gala and Hoik. With Kelso depleted due to a 15s game, it was always going to be down to the Gala v Hoik tie, with many predicting whoever won that game would go on to lift the trophy. It was a close encounter with Callum Rennick opening up the scoring for the Greens. Harris Rutherford retaliated for Gala before James Glendinning put the Maroons in front with this score just after the break. Declan Lightfoot raced down the touchline to draw level, but at the death, Kyle Brunton scored a try, which effectively booked a semi-final place for the hosts. On to Pool C, and with Jed Forrest withdrawing to play a 15s warm-up game against Consett, there was a straightforward shootout between last week's winners Watsonians and Berwick, and it was one-way traffic, with Watsonians in fine form taking the game 55-0. There was more drama in Pool D. Melrose beat a President 7 45-0, but the President side suffered a few injuries, so their game against Hoyk Force didn't get played. Force put up a real fight though against Melrose, racing to a 19-7 lead and looking as if they might cause a big upset. But two tries from Campbell Scott and Matty Bertram right at the end, both converted, wrapped things up for Melrose and we ended up with two Borders teams and two Edinburgh sides in the semi-finals. First up it was Edinburgh Ackies against Hoyk and describing the action for this one, Ian Hurd and first Robin Purdy. It's Kent. Ben Murray, four tries already for Ben Murray this afternoon. He's taken down, however. Now Aki's coming back on this near side. That's going to go to ground. Comes to Campbell. Campbell feeds the big outside man, and that's a huge handoff from Dylan Edwin. And Dylan Edwin goes in and first blood to the Aki's. Yeah, just that little little sort of goose step there for Rudy Campbell. Just held the two defenders, uh, gave the chance to get Dylan Edwin on the outside. Um, and it was a bit of a mismatch. Uh, I think De Declan Life out there. Uh, just a strong handoff and in the corner. Here come Hoyk now. On halfway, Brunton weighs up his options. Hoofs it down the park. Lightfoot's in chase, but Rudy Campbell's going back. Red path also on the hoof. Campbell not got much to work with deep in that corner. Is that going to come back on the Hoyk side? No, Rudy Campbell's done really well there. Now can Aki's go coast to coast? They've got some pacey runners here today. Aki's got Hoyker in over that, and that's... Yeah, that looked a penalty all day long. Ian. Good work from Andrew Mitchell. Yeah, yeah, and Andrew Mitchell's gone himself. He's gone quickly, and Andrew Mitchell's in for Hoyk's first try of this semi-final. Yeah, and I think the way we're trying to get guys to referee the games uh, now is that quick penalty. So again, in, in the past, we probably would have played a bit of advantage to that. It's clear that the advantage was actually that penalty was given, Andrew Mitchell took it quick and he's under the sticks because Aki's are at sixes and sevens because they're trying to defend and they've got to get back the, the sort of six, seven metres back to the goal line. Yeah, it looked ominous from, for Aki's when they were camped deep in their, their own five metre line there. Brunton adds the extras and that takes Hoyk out in a, a slender lead of seven points to five and again Ferguson comes back in field, weighs up his options and goes again, he's done well now he frees up Radpath Red pass, the bigger player here. Red pass shrugged off Gavin Welsh, and Red pass going to go in for the second Hoyt try, and that was all power from the big man. Hoyt there were, they were sort of boxed in; uh, they had absolutely no right to, to get to where they were. Lewis Ferguson's dancing feet. He eventually drew a defender in. The uh, Aki Spear fell off him more than anything else. Yeah, Dalton Red pass on on the charge is a is an ominous prospect for any defender. Here's Rory Campbell. 
What can he come up with? Aki's trailing, of course, 12 points to 5 as it stands. And that's been snaffled by Hoyk, and that's really good play. Now, that is Jay Linton, who spent much of last season injured, Jay Linton, but he's going to go over here for a third Hoyk try, which might be decisive, and that's a great bit of running by Jay Linton here. Yeah, definitely. He just, um, he just broke in the middle, and, it, and just the, the guy was just always that little bit behind him. Couldn't quite reach it. Again, I think Aki's have been drawn into a real arm wrestle. Um, I think they need to try and get the ball, let the ball do the work, let get out to the wings. Um, it's the end of the day that the Hoik is a, it's a, they're, a, they're a big side, they're a big strong side, and they're, they're, they're winning all the arm wrestles. And they need to start, uh, Aki's need to get the ball uh, a bit wider and, and, and use the pace that they've got. And again, another great Hoyt kickoff. Sean Fairbairn's under that. And Sean Fairbairn's won it at the second attempt. Now here goes Redpath. Redpath to Rennick. Is Rennick in touch? No, he's put it back in field to big Dalton Redpath. He stretches over. Dalton Redpath's in. And that, Ian, I would say, is that. Yeah, I think that's the end of the tie. We've got, what, halfway through, three and a half minutes gone. If um, he was indeed... Yeah. yeah, the referee awards the try. Dalton Redpath, second of the afternoon. Even when Aki's have had the ball, they've gone into contact, they've been counter rucked They've just got no um, no fluidity at all. They've not really got their game going at all. And that's another great effort from Brunton, yeah. and this time he's successful. The first one was a sighter. And Brunton has stroked over the second one from this left-hand touchline. And that takes Hoyk out to 24 points to five. Kent. Welsh is the decoy Campbell has got space now can Campbell stretch his legs Campbell's going down this near side Brunton's come across Campbell cuts back infield Campbell's got support but is he going to need it good tackle by Hoyk no the referee's deemed that to be high so Aki's still in possession lovely little dart there by Oliver Finlayson that brings up his second try of the day Aki's second try of this tie 24 points to 10 too little too late here uh, I think so, yeah, I think so I mean, you, uh, Aki's are kicking off to Hoyk Chances of them actually winning it are probably fairly slim I think if Hoyk get the possession, we're, we're fairly much done and dusted Play resumes, he's dropped that right on the 10 metre now Now He's given his forwards every chance But it's Fairbairn who's going to be the gleeful recipient Welsh, Welsh has a crack Well tackled, just shy of halfway Hoyk maintain possession now it's Rennick. Rennick's going to go. Rennick's off here. Nobody's going to catch Rennick, and that's a great piece of running by Callum Rennick and Hoyt are absolutely out of sight now. That's it, yeah. That's uh, uh, pretty much time up by the time the conversion is taken, I would think. Uh, comprehensive win. Yeah, com comprehensive. comprehensive indeed. V impressive win yeah. by Hoyt. You know, tactically very impressive. Hoyk have earned the right to face off against either Melrose or Watsonians in this second semi-final. Watsonians only played one game to get here against a Berwick side that battled manfully but didn't have the same level of quality. It was a routine victory for Watsonians, whereas Melrose have come through a couple of games. It's going to be Strew and Hutchison, the most experienced of campaigners in the Melrose ranks to get us underway. That's a lovely high-hanging kick again. Taking a leaf out of Brunton's book, but it's been gathered in by Watsonians. Josh Mitchell, Tom Kelly, hat trick for him in their only game so far against Berwick. Ali Holmes. Now Ali Holmes always loves a cracker. He's done exactly that here. Ali Holmes. He's got the great sweeper Hutchison to be, but Ali Holmes has got a bit of speed on Hutchison, and Ali Holmes is going to go in over on that far side, and that's a great start for Watsonians. Yeah, very good. Just a little gap opened up, saw it, went for it, and, and he was gone, and he um, he used the angles well to beat. Stuart Hutchison across in the corner. He did. Stuart Hutchison is a great one-on-one -on -one defender, but Ali Holmes gave him the shuffle, put on the afterburners on that occasion, and Ali Holmes, another Watsonian who scored a hat-trick in their only game so far against Berwick. That's his fourth of the afternoon, and Watsonian's off to a great start. The area outside the bar is not as full as it was for the previous game. <laughs> Some things never change at Hoyks. Uh, I'm sure they will be <laughs> back out in around half an hour's time. To cheer on their heroes, but here come Melrose. And that's a good piece of running. Now Holmes has been burned here, and that's Campbell Scott. Campbell Scott, can he go all the way? No, he's been bundled into touch. Yeah, so Watsonians have won the line out. Ooh. And again, more good running. 
Josh, is that Josh Mitchell? Yeah, that's Josh Mitchell, and Josh Mitchell is going to go all the way. Josh Mitchell is under the sticks and out of nowhere from deep within his own 22, Ian. Josh Mitchell's almost gone the length. Yeah, just a simple gap opened up off a line-out. Um, and again, just, just as a slight example there, is that one Melrose player chasing back, but there's also another Watonians player with um, in support. So, you know, if he, if he did get tackled, there's a guy to offload to. They've not fared as well recently on the Kings series compared to you know the, the kind of great period they had where they won three consecutive between 2017 and 2019 the faces have changed the personnel has changed but we just seen at Peebles last week that these boys that have played maybe now a season a season and a half are starting to gel Hutchison takes Melrose need to bring the likes of Don Crawford and Harry Pilcher into this game you would have thought and right on cue yeah. Don Crawford drops the shoulder sees the gap and under the sticks and yeah as I alluded to Ian these are the, these are the guys that Melros are going to need to steer them into this final absolutely yeah I mean you've got you've got some really good players some really good young players in particular with a bit of pace um, but it's still the likes of the Struan Hutchison Donald Crawford these guys that have got the guile and, and the know-how and, and, and just that sort of heads up rugby that they, they play so well Crawford still chasing but it's come back on the Watsonian side now again here goes Mitchell Mitchell's got a man inside Mitchell's not going to need the man inside is he? oh I beg your pardon great defence by Struan Hutchison on his opposite number yeah, and he's tackle. held on there great Mitchell tackle. yeah great he used the angle so well there Hutchison and that's never 10 is that going to seven, seven will be in the bin yeah, yeah. and that's a, that's a blow for Watsonians that's Tom Kelly probably their quickest player Good officiating there. Now it's Melrose. Back to Crawford. Crawford has another crack. Uses his bulk over the 10 metre line. Now there's space on that far side here Hamish for Weir. Hamish Weir. Hamish Weir's got lovely footwork. And that's a great inside pass to Hutchison. Now has Hutchison got the pace to go? Hutchison yeah. into the 22. Hutchison's going to be in here. He dots down Strew and Hutchison, and that is parity, 12 points apiece. Yeah, again, it's just the, the, the attack for Watsonians there. You've got a man inside, you know, just slow up, give him the two on one. Um, if he can stay out of contact, you've then got the opportunity to come back. He's gone into contact. Strew and Hutchison's got straight back up on his feet, done a really good job. Um, the guys played it on the, the Watsonians players played it on the ground, is penalised, and then, you know, Strewn's taken the, the attack penalty quite quick. Struan and Hutchison, you you never get anything less than a hundred from Struan and Hutchison. This is a man. This is a man that turned out for the Southern Knights less than twenty four hours ago. Crawford, Crawford thinks about the ice outside. Thinks and then thinks better of it. But Crawford's now decided to put boot to ball. Now Don Crawford's going to win this race. What about the bounce? Don Crawford takes the bounce. Great play. Great awareness. And Don Crawford is going to touch down for Melrose. Third try of this first half, and the game's been turning its head here. Yeah, interesting decision there by Watson. They're, they're a man down. We're bang on half time. The, the player's probably going to come back on at, at half time. You know, just kick it in the touch. End the half. You're two points down. You get your seventh player back on again. Um, as it turns out, you know, they try to be a bit too clever and finish up the now 19-12 going potentially 21-12 down. Yeah, every likelihood of 21-12, and you're exactly right. I. That's easy for me to say, sat up here, but I would have stuck that into this famous old Mansfield stand. 21 points to 12, Melrose lead. And it's into the hands of Donald Crawford. Two tries for Crawford in this semi-final. Will this be three? Now there's a race on here, Don Crawford. Don Crawford's going to go all the way, it's a lung buster for him. But he's going to go all the way. Don Crawford brings up his hat trick, and he has been Melrose's key man in this semi. Yeah, just that little bit of broken play again. Defence is a bit of a dog leg. He dances around, finds the space, and just takes off and backs himself. He does indeed, and he was in fine form for the majority of last season. Don Crawford, sevens, fifteens, full back, inside centre, outside centre. Ah, he's a player, is Don Crawford. I think he's going to take a, a leave of absence now. And again, conversions so vital, of course, in sevens, and that's a good one from Struan Hutchison. That far banking still baked in sunshine here at Mansfield Park. Hutchison, another high hanger. 
right on the 10 metre line and right back into the gleeful possession, a gleeful possession of the Melrose player Hutchison here's Hamish Weir Deacon Hutchison Campbell Scott Campbell Scott straightens and goes now can Campbell Scott cut in field Campbell Scott's going to go under the posts and that is that Ian that yep. puts the tie to bed end of yeah absolutely lovely piece of running by Campbell Scott there who's another who's looked dangerous for Melrose this afternoon and they just it, it's almost like a conveyor belt for Melrose you know some of the names to the casual observer may not be the most well known but they, they know exactly what to do when they hit a sevens field they're a good sevens side at that, and that breeds good sevens players here goes Townsend out the back door to Weir Weir straightens and goes now he's got lovely footwork because I keep alluding to Hamish Weir Townsend that's Ramage the tall lean figure of Ramage he's given it to the other player with no number that being Matty Bertram now it's back with Ramage to Townsend Townsend with a long floated pass to Hamish Weir and Hamish Weir's going to go in at the corner for another Melrose try and that brings up 40 points yeah just simple stuff it's keep a hold of the ball move it backwards and forwards keep it away from contact um, and then if you do have to take contact you make sure that you take it on your terms and have somebody right in behind you set the set the ruck and then you know, you've know you got the offside lines and you can go play again Watsonians looking for consolation here just outside their own 22 it's flapped back fumbled again now it's come back on the Melrose side Bertram Bertram gives the hitch kick the handoff and Bertram's in 45 points to 12 and it's been Ian a wee bit of a cakewalk yeah it has just Melrose just have been able to, to find gaps um, Watsonian's defence has been a bit broken you know and, and that's just really been the key at all as Melrose have found the little gaps gone through they've had somebody to support they've maybe not had in the past few ties um, and they've, they've been very impressive Townsend now decent effort by Townsend better than decent right over the dot 47 points to 12 that is a convincing victory for Melrose here against the Watsonians team who had looked impressive in their previous game certainly impressive last week at Peeble Sevens where they were the victors but it will be Melrose who will contest the 2022 Hoik Sevens final against the home team Hoik So here we go, Struan Hutchison with a high hanger as is his want, but it's came back on the hall side, the Hoik side. Good work by Dalton Redpath, one of the key men in this Hoik team. Hoik route one, Andrew Mitchell. Andrew Mitchell's all power. He's got Redpath in support. Redpath weighs up the options. Now. Here goes Callum Rannick. Callum Rannick down this near side. Callum Rannick back inside to Lightfoot. Lightfoot's... Oh, Lightfoot had red path. But it's been flapped down. And there's only one, one outcome there, yeah. Ian. Yeah. Fairly simple decision. Struan Hutchison, well. not a man you want to lose for a couple of minutes, but he's in the cooler. Melrose are going to have to tough this one out. Hoik with the pressure. Lightfoot again dummies to Redpath now gives it to Mitchell and Mitchell will saunter in without a hand laid on him for the first try of this final and it's all been Hoik yep simple stuff again just um, Mitchell with his power then offloading and then he just showed a little bit of skill there a little sidestepping through the gap identify the gap knowing that Melrose are down to uh, six players fourth try of the afternoon for Andrew Mitchell the ex-Southern Knight now back at his hometown club Hoyk Brunton like Hutchison has been the master of kickoffs this afternoon in these glorious conditions and again he's given his forwards every chance and Redpath's got to that now here come Hoyk Lightfoot Brunton Brunton's got Lightfoot and Lightfoot's got Ferguson, Ferguson cuts back inside and Ferguson's going to go all the way and Ferguson's under the post, two tries in a minute for Hoyk. Use the extra man, um, 
Miller was number one a little bit lucky there lifted the legs in the tackle and, and drove um, light, light foot into the, into the ground but obviously not seen you know attack the space put the man in and off, off he goes it's, it's uh, nice and easy and the home side here in complete control of this final so far that's Melrose back up to seven as well so so Brunton slightly deeper that time but again red pass keen and again it's come back on the Hoyk side Ferguson the try scorer Ferguson darts and goes he's held up by Ferry but he's still made another couple of metres now it's Jay Linton and Jay Linton's going to go in for Hoyk's third try here and this is a procession it is yeah I mean uh, and if, if Melrose does, don't start to get some ball which you really can't see how they're going to get it because Kyle Brunton's kickoffs are so good um, you know Dalton Redpath's up there winning ball yeah, I just can't see how Melrose can get back into this game at the moment yeah I agree and it's going to be it's going to be a long long way back that's for sure and you mentioned the kickoffs there and Kyle Brunton you know we speak often enough about Struan Hutchison but Kyle Brunton's kickoffs this afternoon have been a sight to behold and yeah. it's been it's been absolutely key to this yeah. march to the trophy here comes Crawford out the back door Scott Scott back to Hutchison Hutchison back to Scott he's got Pilcher for company on this near side straightens and goes however nice lovely footwork from Campbell Scott and it's inside to Hutchison and Hutchison's put it down that's a guilt edged opportunity now here comes Dalton Redpath now Dalton Redpath's going up the middle great pass Dalton Redpath for light foot Pilchers weighed him up. Lightfoot's managed to stay big, but finally he's dragged to ground. And again, it's Redpath there in support to land his bulk. Mitchell out to Brunton. Brunton to Rannick. Rannick out to the burly figure of Sean Fairbairn. And Sean Fairbairn is in for Hoyt's fourth try. It, it didn't come directly from the final pass there, but you know there's a, it was a tale of two passes. The, the pass from Melrose to Sreen Hutchison. It was a poor pass. It was low. Um, you know, it, it was an easy two-on-one, and then you got the two-on-one there between Redpath and, and Lightfoot, which which basically created the, the score in the corner. Yeah, I've been really impressed by Redpath this afternoon. You exactly as you say there, he's not all huff and puff. He's got the skills as well. You know, yeah. he's known for liking the the rough and tumble. He's a big old burly character, but that was a beautiful pass there to to Lightfoot and. Sean Fairbairn brings up his third try of the afternoon. So, 24 points to nil, half-time. Here comes Hutchison, injects a bit of pace. Hamish Weir for company on this near side, but it's been put down by Ferry. It was a rocket of a pass, in fairness to him. Now, Hoyk on the counter. Straightens and goes, still going. Great strength. Oh, he tried to get out. Oh, now it's been picked up by Redpath. That came back off the Mellows pair. That looks slightly forward. It looks slightly forward, but Ronan McKean will care not a jot. And Ronan McKean, the sprinter, two summer sprints to his name. Selka can enter Leithen this summer, and he showed his gas. Yeah, I, th I think uh, good communication between referee Ross Mabin and, and the, the assistant referee Grant Denham on this side was it, it was clearly it was knocked back by a Melrose hand. Um, I'm not sure how much the Melrose player knew about it. Um, the pass after that. You know, it's, it, from where we sit it's impossible to say Ronan McKean was not caring anyway he was the, the grateful recipient of that pass and that almost unbelievably that's his first try of the afternoon in what has been a dominant Hoyk side so Brunton to take things into the 30s does exactly that 31 points to nil that was Crawford now it's going back Mellor is not making much ground but here they come that's good footwork now he's going to go all the way he's got Welsh for company but that's Matty Bertram and Matty Bertram is going to bring up Melrose first try of the final dogged chase by Welsh and that just about sums up yeah. <laughs> sums up Hoyt this yeah. afternoon I agree Melrose knock the zero off the scoreboard great piece of running by Matty Bertram a dogged chase by Gareth Welsh Ramage adds the extras so seven points to Melrose the only problem for them is that there's 31 on the board for Hoyk three and a half minutes to go in the final of the 2022 Hoyk sevens Melrose oh. in possession that's going to be a penalty I think um, 
Gareth Welsh could be a bit of trouble. Yeah, yeah. It's a yellow for Welsh. It was never going to be anything other than that. Now, here come Melrose. Hutchison. Still giving his all. Townsend. Pilcher. Pilcher's got pace. Yeah, Pilcher's got too much pace. And Pilcher's in. So, dogged stuff from Melrose. It's, it's going to be too little, too late, but they're, they're certainly not giving up without a fight. They just need to score quick tries, um, you know, and, and don't need to go through four, five, six, seven phases of possession. Um, yeah, it's good conversion Great kick. there. So it's going to be Brunton throw into this line out. He must be there or thereabouts in the player of the tournament stakes this afternoon. Red path, another, I would have thought. Andrew Mitchell, now he only knows one way, Andrew Mitchell, but he's got the footwork as well. All power from Mitchell, and that's a lovely line. We mentioned his name, Finlay Douglas. That's as good a try as I've seen this afternoon. Get somebody to run up hard, get somebody to run off the shoulder to take that gamble that he's going to be able to get the offload, you know? Yeah, Andrew Mitchell, so much power, Andrew Mitchell, but he showed his footwork there and he had the awareness to pop the deft offload into the grateful arms of Finlay Douglas. And there was only going to be one outcome there. Kyle Brunton with another conversion attempt from in sight in front of the posts to bring things to 38 points to 14 in this final will this be the thing that makes Hoyt go yeah we are pretty good at this abbreviated code oh and there he is again red path Mitchell the two powerhouses Mitchell decides to have a crack back on the field is Welsh it's Welsh to Callum Rennick yeah. and Hoyk are in again and this has been sublime. Third try of the afternoon for Callum Rennick and they've used their bench Hoyk to great effect. Yeah, I mean, the, the ability to use the rolling subs today with the, with the weather has been a big thing and, and they've, done, they've done it really well and, and you know, they're, re, they're replacing more often like for like. So you get three powerful forwards, three powerful forwards come on. It certainly has and this would round off a fine afternoon for Kyle Brunton if he was to slot one from here it's a great effort from Brunton and that just about sums things up for Hoyt this afternoon they have been the dominant force in, in their own tournament 45 points to 14 a resounding final victory against Melrose here yeah I mean it just goes to show you know, they've probably stuck what, 80 odd points on in, uh, against two two teams in the semi-finals you know, you know they've played really well um, they've beaten the teams they've had to beat you know they struggled through against Gala but then they've, they've really come up, hit the straps with a, a, a cracking win in the semi-final and then uh, again the final so yeah best team won absolutely no doubt about that so second day in, the, in a row a different jersey you've got on you but uh, same commitment and you must be absolutely knackered yeah pretty tired by the time that final came to be fair um yeah, no excuse though. Um, I yeah, really, really enjoyed the, the weekend, obviously playing for the Knights last night um, and then came over to Hoyk with, with Melrose today. Um, so we got, we got to the final, so we had four ties. Um, quite a tough group to be fair. Um, that second second game against Hoyk Force, so we went 19-0 down and just came back to win that 21-19. Uh, and then the Watsons tie was, was a tough uh, first half. And then that final uh, was, was obviously one too many. Hoyk were deserved winners and uh, scored a lot of points past us. So I think there was a, a few tired bodies by the time we got to the final. We knew it was going to be tough against Gallo, obviously they cancelled their pre-season game, so they weren't coming here to make up the numbers, they were coming here to try and swallow the party, but, and then the boys dug deep, it took to the last minute, but what happened, we got through that and now White Seven's winners. And a great history as well of the club winning your own tournament, but it, 2016 was the last time, so it was beginning to get a little bit long, wasn't it, and now you had to get your name back on that trophy? Aye, we knew we had a good chance, squads worked well, only two boys in the squad have actually won it before, so it's mm. ten new boys have won it, so nah, chuffed the bits for the boys. Round two of Kings of the Sevens now completed. You're in the points again, which is good. So what about next week? Well, yeah, so Peebles two, two weeks ago, we uh, semi-final, so five points. Uh, runners up here, so seven points. So hopefully we can go one better um, and get the full 10 points next week at Gala. Um, but yeah, so obviously we're up and running. And as you said, that's round two complete. Um, we will have 12 points. Um, so I don't know where that leaves us overall on the table, but we'll just keep chipping away. If, if we can pick up as many points at these tournaments as we can, let's see where we come to sort of end of April, May. And, and yeah, we, we really want to be challenging for that overall Kings of the Sevens title. Hopefully you can pick up some points at Gala and, and see what happens at the tail end of the season when it all starts back up again. 
So how have you been able to combine the preparation for the sevens and preparation for the for the fifteens as well? It's been very difficult this year with three tournaments. Well, to be honest, we've only not really done much sevens. It's all been fifteens focus. Twelve we've got. We've all been in finals before. We're at under eighteens level, senior level. So we cannot dig deep. We cannot play sevens. It was just a case of getting on the pitch and putting it all together. So after two hotly contested semi-finals, it came down to a Melrose and Hoyk final. And Hoyk just had the edge today. Since 2016, they've not brought the trophy home, so I'm sure there'll be celebrations all over Hoyk tonight. Next week, we're at Marooned at Gala, and I hope you can join us there. But for now, from all of us here at Mansfield Park, a very good evening to you.